Craigslist is nowhere near what it used to be. It's been replaced by websites like Facebook Marketplace and Poshmark. Maybe a big reason for this stems from not just the rampant scams on the website, but also because it's the go-to site for a lot of creeps. So for old time's sake, here are three Craigslist ads with disturbing backstories. This was an ad posted in Kansas City a month ago that a viewer by the name of Christian sent in. It's a harmless looking ad for an old vacuum cleaner. This was posted in the for sale by owner section and listed as free. It was titled Free Dirt Devil Vision Bagless Canister. The ad description said, I'm giving away this perfectly working Dirt Devil Bagless Vacuum Cleaner. My wife and I got a new vacuum and no longer need this. First come, first serve. We'll disclose address after communication. The listing left a phone number to contact, and so Christian replied to the ad, sending a text saying he's interested, and promptly got a response. The reply back was, hello, what is your name? To which he replied, Christian, what's yours? They replied, Jackie, nice to meet you. The vacuum is all yours, when can you come pick her up? Christian replied back, if you can hold it for me until tomorrow, I'd come then. They replied back, okay. So the next day, the seller sends a follow-up text. Hello, Christian, what time can you pick up the vacuum? Eight o'clock if that works for you. What's the address? They replied back, sounds good to me. Give me a call, I'll explain how to get here. So at this point, Christian calls the number as directed and a man's voice answers the phone. Not the female voice he was expecting after the seller introduced himself as Jackie. Christian asked if this were Jackie he was speaking with, and the man said no, that's his wife, and that she's not available right now. This was the first red flag for Christian, since it was the same number he was contacting the whole time, yet apparently both this man and his wife were using it, which would just seem a little unusual to anyone, since no one really shares cell phones. The man on the phone introduced himself as Brock, and explained how to get to the location. He gave Christian the cross streets to what he described as his warehouse which he'd have to open the gate for. Christian had a pretty normal reaction, asking what he meant by warehouse, because he was expecting to be given a regular home address to pick up this relatively small item. Brock told Christian that he owned part of a small warehouse where he and his wife would store a lot of their old belongings and stuff they were going to sell. He claimed to be a wholesaler. Christian agreed to come to the specified location at 8 o'clock near Grandview, which is south of Kansas City. The specified cross streets led him to a quiet T intersection in an area with nothing but unmarked buildings that resembled warehouses. Christian parked his car and found the gate that he was told to meet Brock at. When he texted him that he was there, the gate started to roll open automatically and beyond the gate was a long driveway between two different brick buildings leading into darkness. Christian called Brock who rejected the call and texted Christian to come inside the gated area and inside the warehouse straight ahead. It was so dark ahead of him that he couldn't even see a warehouse. Christian asked Brock to bring the vacuum outside by the gate, and this is where the alleged Brock person stopped answering. After trying to call Brock's number multiple times, eventually the calls would go straight to voicemail, likely because Christian's number was blocked. So Christian hurried back to his car and rushed home. Upon checking on the ad once he got home, the listing was taken down. Doing a reverse phone lookup, he found that the number didn't come up on any phone book websites. By avoiding going beyond that gate and into the darkness and unknown ahead, he likely avoided something terrible. <laughs> the following Craigslist ad was posted on May 24th of 2012. On the surface, it looks a little unusual, but like something you could expect to see on the casual encounter side of Craigslist. The poster of the ad said he was looking for a male who was interested in becoming an actor in a personal movie he was making. His requirements for the person included being between the age of 18 and 35 and good looking and including a face and body picture. He also stated he wasn't going to pay them anything as the movie was strictly for his own pleasure. At the bottom he states he's not looking for sex. The poster of this ad was Luca Rocco Magnota, a notorious Canadian murderer who had a whole documentary made after him. The unfortunate soul who responded to this ad was 33-year-old Jun Lin. Luca spent a lot of time in mental hospitals growing up, and in 2002 he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. He first attracted online attention when he started posting videos of cats. Not cute videos though. In 2010, a series of videos were posted online which showed Luca suffocating and drowning kittens. These were not his first crimes. 
He had already been convicted of fraud in 2004 after racking up $17,000 on a friend's credit card, and in 2005, he was accused of sexually assaulting a woman. The video spawned outrage over the internet, and an online community of people formed to work together to try to find the man behind the videos. A tip led them to Luca, and around this time, Luca posted another video in which he fed a cat to a snake and started hinting that his victims might shift to humans. Unfortunately, 33-year-old student Jun Lin was the one to have the misfortune of being Luca's first human victim. Jun was a lonely Concordia University student who didn't have many friends and had only been in Canada for a couple of years. Jun responded to Luca's ad, and they met that same night. Security footage captured them entering Luca's building, and that night, Jun sent a text to his ex that he would see in the morning, saying good morning. It would be his final text. The next day, Luca posted another video called One Lunatic, One Ice Pick. The video captured the savage murder of Jun Lin. In it, Luca stabbed Jun with an ice pick while he was tied up, before performing unspeakable acts and dismembering his body. A few days later, viewers of the video were attempting to report the crime to police, but the reports were dismissed by police because they believed the video was fake. By then, Luca had already started disposing of the body. CCTV footage captured him throwing bags into a bin while wearing Jun's t-shirt. On the 29th of May in Montreal, Mike Nadu, who worked as a janitor, found a suitcase that had been sitting outside the apartment building he worked at for days. He ignored it until the suitcase started emitting a foul smell. Upon opening it, he found Jun's torso inside. So the curiosity, I guess, got the best of us. We said, let's open this and see what's, what's in there. So there was a small lock. We cut it. We opened up and there was a torso with no head and just, uh, you know. Lucas sent the rest of Jun's severed limbs to various different political parties and elementary schools. Eventually, police suspected that Luca had traveled to Europe and this was confirmed when CCTV footage caught him in Germany. Authorities were able to arrest him in an internet cafe in Berlin on the 4th of June, where he was sitting reading articles about himself. In 2014, he was found guilty of first-degree murder, publishing obscene materials, committing an indignity on a body, and criminally harassing the Prime Minister, and he was sentenced to life in prison. Knowing all of this information makes this little Craigslist post that usually wouldn't bat much of an eye in the casual encounter section incredibly disturbing. This last one happened to a freshman girl in college who I'll refer to as Christina. Christina was strapped for cash and was looking to sell her prom dress and other dresses she no longer planned on using. So she made a listing on Craigslist with pictures of all the dresses, including two pictures of her wearing the prom dress. Christina left her number in the Craigslist ad to be contacted on, which for a young girl putting two pictures of her body on Craigslist of all websites wasn't a good idea. Not surprisingly, she got a phone call within the hour, and it was someone who claimed to take interest in the dresses. It was a man on the other end, who she says sounded anywhere from 35 to 55, with a slightly raspy voice. He said he was calling about the dresses she posted on Craigslist, to her surprise because she would obviously expect only females to call or text and inquire about the dresses. He explained that he was looking to buy the dresses for his girlfriend as a gift, and he wanted to know if they'd fit her, so Christina told him all the sizes and prices per dress. The man asked for more pictures of the dresses if possible, which she agreed to, so she kept him on the phone on speaker while she took more pictures of the dresses laid out on her bed. Mid doing this, he started asking more questions that progressively got weirder, starting with how tall she was, how the dress fits up there, and what size bra she wears, to which Christina started feeling uncomfortable, mentioning to him that's not relevant. He apologized and said he just wanted to make sure it would be a good fit for his girlfriend. He then proceeded to ask if the dresses were tight on Christina, and she replied some of them are moderately tight. The next question was where Christina really started to question this man's intentions. He asked if there was any chance she could send him pictures with her wearing all the dresses to get a better idea of if they'd fit his girlfriend. After a few seconds of silence because Christina didn't know what to say, the man on the other end asked if she used to wear panties under the dresses, followed by a short creepy chuckle, and then he said, you have a really cute voice. Christina hung up the phone and blocked the number. She also took the ad down from Craigslist and didn't plan on listing it again on there but she would later find out that he would start stalking her after a random account started following her on Instagram and requested her on Facebook. 
Both accounts had no pictures and the name Mike Allen. A quick lookup of the number that called her revealed the name Michael Allen on Google. This meant she was now dealing with the stalker situation, and it only got worse from there. When she blocked both accounts, she kept getting calls from a no caller ID number, and it only stopped when she set up silence unknown callers on her phone, but the stalking didn't end there. One night later, there was a running car with its lights off parked outside Christina's house. She noticed this before going out. She called to her dad to point it out as possibly being the guy who had been stalking her, and as soon as her dad stepped outside, the car drove away with its headlights still off. At this point, Christina's dad sent a threatening text to the man's number, and then tried calling multiple times to no avail, to end up leaving a loud voicemail. It seemed to do the trick, as the stalking stopped as far as they know, and hopefully that's the case for good. Christina was smart in how she handled this, hanging up and blocking the number as soon as the man made creepy comments, and blocking his social media accounts. Unfortunately, there's not much to do once someone has your number if they want to stalk you, as a lot of your information can be found just through that. That's why it's best that if by some chance you still use Craigslist, don't use your real phone number. <laughs>